Welcome to the Christy Taylor Show. I'm Christy Taylor. Thank you so very much for joining us today. Have a very important and exciting and heart inspiring show for you today. I had the honor of meeting this amazing personal transformation co coach in a class. And I was excited when she accepted my invitation to join me here on the Christy Taylor Show. Let me give you a little information about our special guest. We are going to be speaking with Cynthia Isaac. She's a coach, a personal growth and transformation mentor, certified hypnotist, also EFT practitioner, personal development trainer, workshop and seminar facilitator, and a fellow widow whose purpose in life is to encourage, equip and empower widows worldwide to grow beyond the grief and loss so you can heal hurt and heartache. Rediscover the real you and recreate a more prosperous, more fulfilling future you love with grace and ease. Her passion is to support the widowed to drop the drama as they transform trauma into triumph. Her specialty is to get straight to the heart of the matter to promote healing and transformation. She inspires her clients to tap into their inner greatness to confront challenges, commit to change, and celebrate success from a place of strength and power. I want you to help me welcome to the Christy Taylor Show, my special guest, Coach Cynthia Isaac. Thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you, Christy, for having me. I'm excited about connecting with your audience. Well, this is going to be an amazing adventure. Of course, you and I, we had a chance to meet. We are currently uh, enrolled in a course that's teaching us how to create courses. And you are my accountability partner. And you have really been a godsend. <laughs> and we will talk more about that as we get into today's conversation. But first, wow, you have a lot going on. You, that bio, can you give me a little backstory on who and who you are, where you're from, and then we're going to get into your professional amazingness. Yes, yes. My name is Cynthia Isaac, and I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. And the reason for this is because back in uh, 20, 2008, after a series of chemo and radiation treatments, along with a series of um, surgeries, my husband passed unexpectedly. Wow. Okay. Yes. So that began the journey into your coaching? Yeah. Well, what happened after that is when he uh, passed, first of all, I was in shock. Total, complete shock. I was confused. I was disoriented. I actually felt like a part of me had died. Wow. I realized very early that I have no future and sometimes even I wanted to die. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you know, what happened? Yeah. What happened at that time? I was, thank God, I was actually going through because my background was personal development and training. And I was actually going through coaching. I had started a coaching training program and my intention was to help women in um, professional corporate environment mm -hmm. to step out of that and possibly whatever they want to do, become a coach or do whatever they want to do. So that was initially what I was going for the coaching for. But after my husband's death, all of that changed dramatically. So I began to explore, explore more and more about coaching. And I started taking uh, certification programs uh, for a uh, hip, I became a professional hypnotist, um, NLP, which is neuro linguistic programming, uh, EFT, uh, emotional freedom technique, all of these different certifications, all these different programs. And I was taking them because I needed them. And what I found out is that during the training, me learning it, me practicing, having other people practice with me, work with me, I began to release a lot of those negative, I should say, or um, emotions that were coming and causing me to feel stuck or not able to move forward. So that was a beautiful thing right there. And uh, fortunately- That's beautiful. Now, Coach, yeah. Coach Isaac, so you had already, prior to your husband's passing, you were already on the path of helping women, uh, professional women, but when you experienced your own loss, as you said, the the messaging change you still want to help yes. women and now men who have yes. lost their partners through uh through death now is this a niche 
when it comes to coaching? Because I, I have to say I've heard of grief counseling. Uh, but I've never really heard about coaching. And, and is there a particular niche that you address? Yeah, you know what? That's that's a, a very, very specific, uh, Christian. I'm glad we're talking about that. Because I do believe that uh, grief support, grief coaching as a rule, that is out there. What is specific is the fact that um, I actually work with um, brown and black widowed people specifically and the whole coaching idea as as a general rule is out there but not specifically speaking to that uh, group of people so the niche then is the widow people and more specifically widow people of color understood understood yes yes now now coach now coach isaac now are you a a religious woman or as a person <laughs> is you a person of faith uh do you go to church you know the, i'm setting you up i'm setting you up with this question <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I am definitely a woman of faith. I really grew up and lived uh, most of my life in the church. So I'm very, very familiar with the church and the environment of the church and the practices of the church. So, yes, I would say that I am a spiritual woman, not a religious woman. But I did grow up in the church environment. I'm very well aware of um, all that happens in in the church. The reason I wanted to set you up is because with you're talking about grief, and talking about particularly coming up with a niche of coaching, um, dealing with the aftermath, oftentimes the church just tells you to pray. Yeah, yeah, that, you know, that's the thing about it, Christy. Let me kind of step back a little bit. Um, what happened, as I said, I was going to all of these places. I myself sought out these places because you, you can imagine 13 years ago, much of this that I'm seeing now wasn't even available, much of these resources. So I sought out and as I sought out the places, the organizations, the groups, the seminars, the workshop, they all were ran by Caucasian people. Now, that's a beautiful thing. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But what I found is that as a African-American woman and dealing with other African-Americans and our situations, our situation is unique. Yeah. We have different circumstances and different challenges that are really never addressed in that environment. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is- a couple of ideas? I just want to interject very quickly this question. What are some of the things, I mean, because there is, of course, we note a difference between Eurocentric values and African-American values and really, people of color around the world value systems, but what specifically are you speaking of in regards to dealing with laws? Well, the, the, the point is, uh, I, we know that uh, in many situations, there's a lot of intolerance in the world itself, but specifically in America, United States, we're dealing and we're very much dealing with systemic racism, inequalities in economics, inequalities in opportunities. So what happens is many times, when uh, and then many times people of color aren't encouraged to go and get help. Many times they feel, oh, that's weak. All you need to do is pray, you know, which praying is wonderful. And I agree with praying, but you also need to do something further than praying. And so that's what has really helped me create the course that I have. Uh, and my course is called Cynthia Heals, Heals, H E A L S. Mm -hmm. The H means healing emotional anguish leveraging self-support wow so that's, that's what this is all about yes healing emotional anguish leveraging self-support i want that person to become strong that they can then go out and handle any emotions that they are confronted with as well as help someone else if that's what they choose to do now, when it comes to loss, whether it's a child, a parent, you know, um, you know me personally, and I just lost my mother. Yes, and yes. There's there's cycles of grief that come, the ebbs and the flow. But as you said, when you are married to someone, when you have a life partner, um, there is a different level of, of, of sense of loss. And as you said, a part of you, because you've been joined together, a part of you goes with them. So yes. what are some of the concrete things that you really have to look out for if you have experienced um, loss of a loved one, a, a life partner, a husband or a wife that you just need to like really zone in on 
past the memorial service? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The first thing is you really, I know I'll just talk about my personal experience. I recall, as I said, I was in shock. I was uh, uh, disoriented, confused, but I remember actually walking into my home and our house had a his side and a her side. My husband did that purposely. So I would walk past his side and to tell you, I left his room exactly like he left it. Wow. And Christy, that room stayed that way for at least about six months. Wow. I couldn't even enter the room. I chose not to enter the room for at least two months. Wow. I would look in there, but I wouldn't go in there. I believe that something about it mm -hmm. at that time allowed me to think that, oh, maybe he's coming back. Mm -hmm. So you ask for mm -hmm. specific things around that. First, you have to accept the fact that that person is not coming back. Right. And you need to take as much time as you need to do that. I was fortunately I was able to be in that home. And uh, if anybody came, of course, I closed the door. But for my own personal um, sanity, I allowed it to be there because I know, you know, and the other thing, too, is you may just cry at any moment. You may go through any wave of emotion at any time. And it's not always you can't always handle it so that you have to know how to deal with those emotions. What I do is when I work with people, I help them with their thoughts. I help them with their emotions and I help them to with their limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I do and I help them to uh, transform and transmute that on various levels. Physically, oh, now you are you you're stepping into some deep stuff, Coach <laughs> Isaac. You are stepping into. OK, now it's one thing to be dealing with the grief of losing someone you loved and was partnered with married to. And now you're talking about the survivor's own limiting beliefs. Come on. You got to give me, what are you talking about right there? <laughs> oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And the thing about it is that if we think about an iceberg, I think that that's everybody can understand what an iceberg is. When you see an iceberg, what you're really looking at is the very tip of it. So you don't see the whole thing. So that's how we are as grieving people and as specifically as grieving spouses. So you're seeing the tip of the iceberg, which is what has actually happened. What you're not seeing is what's underneath that. So often people will say, oh, wow, you are being so strong because on the outside, you appear that you're handling things, things are going well, they don't see you out of sorts. But in reality, there are all kinds of emotions that are taking place underneath. And many times it is a storm, it is trauma, it is a tsunami. I mean, those emotions are raging and you have to learn how to, first of all, uh, face those emotions. Yeah. And I believe in teaching people how to feel those emotions. Mm. Oh, yes. Coach Isaac. yes, yes, yes. Okay. We're going to take a very brief break, but we're going to come back and talk about the the ability to choose to feel. Ooh. Yes. Oh, my goodness. That's going to get good. Welcome back to the Christy Taylor Show. And today I have a very special guest, my accountability partner, Coach Cynthia Isaac. And we are talking about how to transform trauma into triumph, particularly when it comes with the loss of a spouse, the loss of a life partner. And you were just talking about how you encourage people to feel Oh my God. It's one thing to think about. Yes. You said, I'm not going to go in the room just yet. I'm going to take a couple months before I go and change things around, move things out. But even in that, you can still be void of emotion or at least divorcing yourself from the ability to feel. 
Oh, you got to go deep on that. Absolutely. One. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I will say, Christy, that I didn't consciously say, oh, I'm not going to go into the room. I think that underneath that, 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 to uh, Sasami that I was telling you about, that, that, that storm that's going on, I think underneath, I felt that if I went in there, that I would have to face more things, more thoughts, more emotions that I was prepared to face at that time. Understood. So it was easier for me to think that, oh, he's out of town and he'll be back or whatever. I mean, I knew it wasn't true, but at the same time, it just gave me a level of comfort. But I had to come out of that and start to actually face my feelings and feel my feelings. The thing about it is that if you don't face those feelings, if you don't allow yourself to feel the feelings, you're stuffing them down. Mm. And if you're stuffing them down, guess what? Mm. They're staying within your system and they're causing all kinds of blocks and long-term dis-ease, disease. That's how many times people get Whoa. sick. You've heard of people, I've even heard of, and it's true, that people, maybe the spouse, maybe six, six months or a year later, they die. Yeah. Many times it's they're dying of a heartache. Yeah. They're dying because they weren't able to release those feelings. Wow. If you don't feel those feelings, then you're not able to transmute, dissolve and release those feelings. So I teach my clients how to do that. You know something, this is something um, that is helpful in any form of loss. But yes, I, I like the fact that you are focusing on husbands and wives. Um, the surviving spouse yes. and people of color. And yes. you said, of course, there are things intrinsic in our American culture that puts it at, us at a disadvantage, even culturally, like, you know, big girls don't cry, you yes. know, women don't cry, everybody don't cry, you know? <laughs> yes. So, therefore, a lot of times that we don't cry or we don't process our thoughts and have the uh, freedom to process our feelings, to feel them and process them. And as you say, dissolve and transform them. I like that. I like, I like that imagery of that. Uh, what, see, what, hap what happens is we put on a mask. Yeah. A ma we pretend yeah. to the world. We pretend to ourselves that yeah. everything is okay. We yeah. lie to ourselves. And mm -hmm. I'm all about getting to the heart of the matter and for you to become the authentic, real you. Let the real you come through. Let the real you shine. And I help you to do that. And once you do that, it dissolves and, and, and it just releases a lot of other complications that are there once you become real with yourself. Now, that's a mouthful <laughs> even before somebody dies. <laughs> that's, a lot, yes, that's a lot of inner true. work. That's some, he <laughs> that's some heavy lifting. And then to add grief on top of that. So how do you get a person to even... Uh, take advantage of your amazing services? Well, first of all, the thing is, and that's why I'm here now, is I really want to tell the world that this resource is available. This, my, my new Cynthia Heals uh, program, it's available and it will leverage self uh, support. It's a self support system. So if anybody wants to know about the self support system, they can contact me at Cynthia isaac.com and she has it printed on the screen there's cynthia isaac.com that's the best way to go and at least make the connection but uh we were talking about how does people know the thing is most times people are not aware of the different resources that are out there and so i am here to uh let you know about this resource and let you know that uh once you take advantage of that and you get the healing and i said it's going to be on all levels physical mental um emotional uh, spiritual and energetically Ooh. all of those levels so once you uh learn to heal that hurt heal that heartache deal with and handle those situations it not only impacts you you're no longer wearing that mask you become the real person you become authentic it also changes it changes you it changes family members especially children children are watching you and they're going to behave as they see. You can tell them all day long what to do, but they're going to behave as they see. So if they see you, you know, not being strong and not being real, that's what they're going to pick up. So you it, know, it like changes that. and impacts your whole life and all I'm your relationships, thinking. your work yeah. environment, all of that. I'm and like and I want to say, Christy, that I do this with grace and Ease. This is not a traumatic 
uh, uh, session. These are all about grace and ease. And I lovingly take your hand and walk you from the island of pain across the bridge and into the island of pleasure, hope, and happiness, if that's where you want to go. Wow, you were you were touching on some of the thoughts that I was thinking beyond the children, extended family, your uh, business relationships, your your job, your yes. coworkers and colleagues, and just to be able to add that part about the grace and ease, because truly, I know in the time that I've known you, um, that is one of the things that you really talk about how important it is going back to our cultural differences yes how we de-stress and allow ourselves to grieve and process our pain that trauma um and transform it without being stressed out about it <laughs> exactly exactly and, and 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 we're not we're not taught that as a culture we're not taught that we're taught to be strong we're taught to uh, move forward. You know, we saw our grandparents do it. And we, as particularly Black um, uh, African American people, women especially, we say, oh, you're so strong. You know, and I mean, in some ways we are strong, but that doesn't mean that we're, we're not vulnerable. That doesn't mean that we don't experience pain. So you know, it's okay mm -hmm. to reach out for help. And, you and, just, and, just, and just going to a grief support group, that's not going to give you the type of help you need. That's better than nothing, but you actually need someone who is equipped and trained to help you through this grieving process. Okay, well, I want to kind of get into the knots and the bows because someone would be saying, well, I, I go to grief counseling. You know, I lost yes. a loved one, uh, my husband, my wife, my partner. And, you know, I go to grief counseling. I have therapists. Uh, so what's different about your program? Give me some ideas of what is different. What's different about my program is that I get into the heart of the person. I go to the heart of the matter and we provide rapid transformation for that person. I'm not talking about just uh, for that moment, forgetting about it. And then when you're at home at night by yourself, when you go in the bed, that person's not there. All of a sudden, the flood of emotions come. I'm talking about when that comes, you're having tools, tips, techniques that allow you to transmute that. And the first thing is to acknowledge it and feel it. And then I teach you a process, how to go through, how to feel it, how to see it, how to recognize it. We also teach you how to journal, keep a journal, keep track of what's going on. There are many, many ways to do it, And that's what I do for, for you. I help you walk through that process. And it is not just talking. A lot of the times when you're going to those uh, uh, grief groups or therapists. And I'm not saying that they're good. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of time it's talk therapy, a lot of time. And for the, for the moment, it works and it helps you for the moment. But when you're by yourself late at night, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, you miss that person, you reach over there, that person's not there. Here comes the tears. Here comes the flood. It's keeping you up all night long. You are uh, uh, so upset. You can't even think. And sometimes you carry that anger with you. You get angry at your children. You get angry at the dog. You get angry at your boss. You get angry at the hospital. You get angry at uh, whoever and whatever. The anger just floods you. So I also have a uh, um, an ebook which they can also get too if they would uh, go to cynthiaisaac.com mm -hmm. and they can uh, click on there and that will give them an ebook that talks about the five uh, uh, surprising things that happens uh, during the time and uh, what to do about it and also how to connect with me as well. You know, last but not least, one of the things that I'm glad you brought out is that is that is that midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., that's when the flood of grief happens and you have tools and techniques um, that you really teach them how to use. Why is that important in closing for them to process that as they rebuild and go to another level of living? Exactly. As I said, because of all the things that I went through, I started to develop my own quote system of what worked for me. So as I move further in that, I uh, cre uh, created the heel and the part of the heel is that self support system. And I want to emphasize self support because this is all about you getting the support that you need so that you can then uh, be empowered and uh, come from a place of strength and empoweredness and we're going to be doing it with grace and ease but this is something that you're going to learn on your own and you're going to carry with you to support yourself in any situation 
Okay, I did say last but not least, but this is the real <laughs> last, and this is truly not the least. Is there love after loss? Oh my God, Christy, 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 my Lord. <laughs> ah! My other name, my other name is the divine love coach. <laughs> That's how I handled this entire situation. It really is about love. And to answer your question, yes, and yes, and yes. And that is what I teach my clients to understand that love is here. You are here. You were created to love, be loved and give love. And this is really all about love. That's what I'm talking about when I say grace and ease. This is teaching you how to be your authentic self and your authentic self is you were created to love, to be loved and to live in this world and show other people how to love and be loved. And that is my purpose. Wow, that's powerful. So all of this great inner work that you'll do as a person who's experienced the loss of a husband or a wife or a significant other, is so that you can get back to the realization and the truth of love. Absolutely, absolutely, exactly. absolutely. It's all about love in the end. It's all loving love. yourself, love, loving God, loving yourself and loving others. And when we are able to put all of that together and do that as a part of our own lives, that's when we excel. That's when we're transformed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. This is powerful, Coach Cynthia Isaac. Be sure to go to her website. She has an ebook waiting for you as well as an opportunity to connect with her. I appreciate you so very much. Any last words as we close? I just want to say thank you. And I just hope that everyone that is listening will contact and reach out. And even if you know someone who has gone through this, or maybe you are in an organization or a church and you want to know more about it, reach out to me because. I will also help you plan and put together something for your organization if that's what you would like to do as well. Awesome. Awesome. Coach Cynthia Isaac, check her out online. And thank you all so very much for checking us out here on the Christy Taylor Show. Until next time. <laughs>